If you're thinking about moving to Tampa, Florida, you need to know the truth. Because let's be real. Even with all the incredible things that Tampa has to offer, the food, the dining, the outdoors, the beaches, and the sunshine, it still has its pitfalls. And today I'm gonna to share with you all the things you want and need to know about living in Tampa, Florida before you make your final decision turning that Gulf Coast dream into a reality. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. We are arriving Tampa International Airport. I remember the first time we stepped on that beach, it just absolutely blew me away. I had never experienced anything like that. Being from Detroit, Michigan, I mean, we're in the Great Lakes state. I had grown up on the water, was blessed enough to be able to spend a lot of time there, but there is something very unique about the Gulf Coast. The sugar sand, the clear water, and the incredible sunsets. And it just hooked our heart, man. We could not get away from this mindset of wanting to make this dream a reality. Now, there's a lot of things we didn't understand, right? Being from the North, you're ignorant about a lot of things. And, you know, ignorance is not a bad word. It's just, you know, in letting you know that you don't know everything. You know nothing, John Snow. We came down bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, and boy, did we learn a lot. And in today's video, I'm going to share those lessons with you. So whether you're coming down to be a part-time resident or a full-time resident, you know, and we have a really good mix of both here. Maybe you're retiring or maybe you're a young working professional taking care of this incredibly hot market here in Tampa for tech. I mean, we are attracting so many young tech workers. It is the unofficial tech hub of Florida, which is awesome. But not only that, it's driven by a lot of industry. You know, we have defense contractors here. We've got the Air Force Base, McDill Air Force Base, here. Transferred to an army base in Florida. And it has attracted a lot of people from all over the country. You know, the Northwest has moved here. The Northeast has been moving here forever. And of course, y'all know the snowbirds who are basically the people uh, in Canada and the Midwest who come down every single winter to take advantage of our incredibly blessed weather. Snowbirds heading north now that winter's over. We were one of those people too. You know, we would sneak out in the winter, you know, when it was cold and dreary and gray and we hadn't seen the sun in a month and we would come down to Florida. My father-in-law lives on the Atlantic side in Martin County and we just loved it and for years we thought we were going to be there but man when we came to these beaches it just really snapped us out of it and we just fell in love we couldn't we couldn't help ourselves but talking about that weather man we got an education and listen I've been coming to Florida for 15 years. I know that it's hot in September. I know that the summers are hot, but until you live here, you really don't quite understand it. Live in Florida, who can tell the difference between a hot flash and a weather front? <laughs> and I remember the education that we got about the weather. Uh, you know, we came down, we took possession of our home in December of 2018, and I knew it was hot in September, but I had no real idea how relentless that heat could be. And I gotta be honest with you, it is not for everyone. So I wanna share a little bit of perspective. And I remember I was in Fort Lauderdale that first winter. I was talking to um, someone I had just met, and he asked me, he said, have you ever lived through a Gulf Coast summer before? And I said, no, why? And <laughs> the description he gave me was incredible. He said, it's like waking up to a golden retriever right here, like right on your face. And man, was he right. And I gotta tell you, you know, we, you know, we were so excited just to be here and we kind of like just gritted through that summer and it was warm and it rained a lot and we had a lot of new things that came our way. We were not used to the type of storms that happen here. You know, a regular hard rain in Florida is harder than any thunderstorm that I would experience normally back home in the Midwest. It rains like that all the time. And during the summer, it can rain like that almost every day. Usually you can set your watch to it somewhere between three and five o'clock. You also have the threat of hurricanes. Like this is reality. Now we have been entirely blessed. The last few years here, we were supposed to get a few hurricanes. We ended up not experience any of it, but this state is known for hurricanes. And you know, it's just part of life here. You know, having hurricane impact windows or having to put hurricane shutters up or board your house up. This is a reality of living on the Gulf Coast or in Florida, anywhere near the water. So just keep that in perspective, whether it's Miami, Jacksonville, heck, even Orlando has to deal with hurricanes too. Obviously the, the threat of flooding is a lot less for them, um, but this is something to be mindful of. Now, if you're gonna move here, look for areas that are um, non flood zones, non-evacuation zones. Those are the areas that you really want to target. In the greater Tampa Bay area, you can find those. I live just um, less than two miles away from the Gulf Coast, right off Indian Rocks Beach, and we don't have to carry flood insurance 
and we're not in a flood evacuation zone. Our home is like 38 feet above sea level. I know people are laughing right now. That's high in Florida. <laughs> Whole other level above super. And our insurance is great. We literally just renewed our policy, $2,542 a year. Some of you are hearing that you're mortified. Others, you know that any, if you've dug into Florida at all, you know that people can spend as much as eight, 10, $12,000 a year on their homeowner's insurance. And some people can't even get insured at all if they live right on the coast. So this is something to keep in perspective. The weather, the summers are long. Relentless is the term that I would use. And that's basically from July through September. Sometimes you get a good October. We're getting a great October right now, but usually for us in the five years that we've lived here, it's been right around November. That's when the humidity just kind of completely stops. And then it's that Florida that everybody dreams of. So just keep that in mind, right? We have the great outdoors here. You get to take advantage of the beach, but this is something you need to be aware of. With that sunshine, there is a cost. Now, is it worth it? I think so, but that's entirely up to you. So that's a decision you're going to have to make. Come on, who doesn't want to move to Florida? If we've never met before. My name is Juan Alcala. I help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest here in the Tampa Bay area. All my contact information is listed down below. So if you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out to me and my team. We'd be more than happy to have a conversation turning that Gulf Coast dream into reality. All right, so let's talk about the cost of living here in Tampa, Florida, because boy, things have changed. I mean, literally five years ago when we brought our families down, this place was a steal. It was an absolute value. I really felt like Tampa was undervalued. I had no idea what was about to happen next. None of us did. Obviously, we had this global pandemic that changed everything for everyone. And the cost of living has continued to skyrocket almost everywhere in the United States. But in Tampa, especially people are starting to feel it. A lot of the locals, you'll hear them say that it's become unaffordable. And to be honest with you, I can't argue with, with some of them because their housing cost or the cost of groceries or things have gone up so much and they were living off a of fixed income that they can't afford to live here anymore. Now, conversely, on the other side, Florida is attracting more more income earners over $200,000 annually than anywhere else in the entire country. That's fascinating when you think about it. And we have some of the highest inflation in the country here in Tampa. Our inflation um, at the end of July was 7.3%. It's the last stat that I saw. We're in October now at the time of this recording, um, but it's still up. And uh, this is something to take note of. And I did an entire video on the cost of living. I will put that in the description down below so you can go check that out, where I said you needed to make at least $138,000 dollars in order to live in uh, Tampa comfortably. Um, and it, and I made that video because I saw an article saying that to live in Florida, you had to make $130,000. So I was like, that can't be right. And I sat down and did all the math and I was blown away. And with the cost of housing continuing to increase in the United States and here in Tampa, it is really putting a pinch on people. And I want to give just a little bit of perspective on numbers here. So bear with me, right? But like you have to make $138,000 to live in Tampa. Well, why? People hear that, they're like, there's no way that that's true, but it absolutely is. If you're going to actually live here. Now, I want to say this, surviving and living are two different things. Surviving and thriving are entirely different things in general. So when I say this, our average home price here in Tampa is $524,000. That's a three bedroom, two bath, 1800 square foot home. Now, can you find homes cheaper? Absolutely. You can still find condos down in the $180,000 range. They're gonna be small, they're gonna need a ton of work. And you can spend as much as $15 million on an estate here in the area. So there is something to be had for everyone, but the average home sale, which is basically where, you know, most of the people that I help serve, you know, if you're considering making a move to this area, you're most likely in that category are going to spend somewhere between $500,000 and $850,000 on average. But that, that average sales price right now is four, five twenty four. So let's just do some quick math and forgive me here. The interest rates as of today are 7.72%. If you put 10% down, your taxes are $6,500, which is right about what they'd be. If you get a good deal on insurance at $3,000, which is totally possible, um, again, you put 10% down, you're gonna be looking at a monthly mortgage payment of right around $4,167 a month. And if you have to come to Florida and buy a new car, Nerd Wallet just released an article saying that the average new car payment in the United States is now $772. 
that's mind blowing. So you do that and then you add another $400 for insurance because that's roughly what it costs. My wife and I have two vehicles, one's new, one is used, it completely paid off and we pay 416 a month. We basically pay $5,000 a year for insurance. So if you just look at those two things, you're at $5,200 before you even turn the lights on. So when people hear those numbers, they're like, there's no way that's true. But if you were to move here and, and try to buy the average home and put the average down payment and had to buy a new car, that's what you'd be looking at y'all. So keep that in perspective. This is something that you have to be mindful of. Again, you can do it for less, right? And you can do it for way more, but the cost of living here in Florida has gone up tremendously along with the United States, but we're still leading the way in inflation, which isn't great. Now, does that should that deter you from coming? I don't know. Our real estate is incredibly hot still. Well, I was reading an article this morning that said that Tampa home values are number 18 in the country and one of the, um, the best markets to still continue to invest in. So this is something you're gonna have to take into consideration if, hey, if you'd like to have more conversation about this, I'd be more than happy to go to the numbers because it's not right for everybody, but if you are considering making that move and you're looking to get the best deal, or more importantly, to make sure that you move in the right community for your ideal lifestyle, do not hesitate to reach out to me and my team. All of our contact information is below, including the link to my calendar. I'd be more than happy to chop it up. And that leads me to the other part of, you know, some of the challenges we're facing right now and some of the truths you need to know about living in Tampa. Because of all of these people that have moved here over the last three to five years, Tampa has exploded in population size as well. We're about 3.2 million people according to the census. I think that's going to be up a little bit, but again, those numbers kind of lag. But we are an exploding population. People are still moving in the area, they're attracted to warm weather, sunshine, great beaches, incredible outdoors, and jobs. We have the lowest unemployment or some of the lowest unemployment in the United States. Tampa is still rocking and rolling, even though gloom and doom is being broadcasted everywhere. So that's a blessing. Are things starting to slow down here? Of course they are, but we're still really far ahead or really far behind being pulled into whatever is happening here. So depending on how you like to frame that, but it's something to keep in mind. But with that has come an overwhelming explosion of traffic too. And I've shared these stories about my personal journey here in Florida and our insurance. I mean, we shared this before. Our insurance costs doubled. Make no mistake about it. It's a huge blessing that we live in a state where you don't pay any personal income tax to the state. That's awesome. But of course that gets made up in other ways. Our property taxes are extremely reasonable. We're, if we would have bought the same house we live in now, um, back home in Metro Detroit, we would have been paying twice the taxes, which is unreasonable for us. Um, we wouldn't even have considered it. But you know, if you're moving from the Pacific Northwest, out West or the Northeast, taxes on properties here are much less expensive um, on average what I'm seeing from clients, but that is going to be relative to where you live. So keep that in mind is important. But again, with all this influx, we've had all of <laughs> more drivers on the road, right? And insurance has gone through the roof. Florida has more uninsured drivers than anywhere else in the country. So keep that in mind. Um, it's an, a no fault state. It, it is like Wally world out here, y'all. It's the wild west. That's the way I tell everybody. No, it's not the playground. It's the wild, wild west. Retirees who come down to the winter. You've got vacationers who come down. People who are partying all the time. That's part of it. Then you've got all these uninsured drivers. You have all of these unique driving habits from people all around the country. And um, I say that it, it would you would think that because there is a road and we have you know rules that people would understand that you know you 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 follow those rules, but but you bring your rules and how you're used to driving and those habits here. And even though they only might be subtle, those little things can have a big impact, you know, when we're talking about automobiles running around. Now, I've shared this with you before, but I uh, remind you guys, our vehicles were hit the first three years we were here. Just <laughs> crazy. Um, the very first summer we were here, we were hit on the highway in, in, in the rear end. We had stopped for an accident along with the entire um, other traffic and the guy behind us hit us in the back of my pickup truck. That stunk. Um, the following Christmas, um, I had an elderly gentleman um, back his truck into the front of my truck. I was 
I backed into a star, uh, Starbucks right around the corner from our house and he put his hitch right to the front of my truck. You're like, what in the world? The following year, um, we were downtown St. Pete for the Grand Prix, which was awesome by the way. You know, as drivers tend to do, they get around fast cars, people got approved points and um, a young lady who was in a Camaro decided she was gonna pass a bus. The streets were incredibly busy. I have no idea how she did not hurt somebody, but she tried to pass a bus by showing off and stepping on the gas pedal her her tires broke loose she came around the front of the bus and smashed right in the back of our brand new vehicle this one hadn't been hit yet <laughs> and then it had literally tore like the entire driver's side court oh man it was just one of those situations and i we came back and i was walking up and I see all the cars. We heard the accident. We were having um, dinner with my in-laws who were in town uh, just a couple restaurants away. And we come walking up and I see all this um, hustle and bustle. And you know, you see the cars and oh, by the way, she hit three other cars. She hit mine, bounced off, and then hit three other cars on the way out. Um, totally destroyed her Camaro, destroyed a couple other cars. Our car was actually drivable, which was awesome, but it was in the shop for quite a period of time getting fixed. Um, and then as I'm walking up, I see cops closer and closer to my car and I'm like, please tell me that's not us. And I walk up, I'm like, looks not good. And he's like, yeah, you got a problem. So it's something you have to keep in mind. Now, do I think it's so dangerous that I'm not willing to drive? No, but I'll tell you what, <laughs> driving in Florida is not a spectator sport. This is not lazy Sunday strolls in Tampa. Maybe if you go out into the boondocks that you're out in Ocala and you get away from areas like that. But when you're in Tampa, you need to be alert and you need to be attentive because it can get wild out here. It is not uncommon to see someone in the right lane make a three lane change over to the left lane so they can turn it. I mean, it seems like it happens almost every day. So keep your head on a swivel while you're in Tampa because you never know how this is gonna go down. And I'm not gonna drive in from Florida. <laughs> now the next truth that I'm about to share is the one that usually gets people really anxious. And this is pest and wildlife. And the first thing you need to be aware of that it, you know, Florida is a subtropical climate, especially here in Tampa. We have both friend and foe when it comes to wildlife. And what I mean by that is like, look, we have alligators here. Alligator City. This must be Florida, Max. We have snakes here. Snakes! Snakes everywhere! We have other pests like um, cockroaches. They call them palmetto bugs. Um, that's a fancy term that some marketer came up with to not scare tourist people with the size of these cockroaches because they're unbelievable. Um, there are spiders. There's all kinds of things you have to deal with in a climate that doesn't freeze, right? We don't have this cycle, especially if you're from the northern states. We don't have this cycle of like deep freeze where we kill uh, pests and bugs. That does not happen here. It is summer all the time. We have summer, we have summer junior, we have summer senior, and we have winter summer. All of these summers are the same. And I, may, I say that tongue in cheek, y'all, but like with those blessings also comes challenges and you are going to be faced with some of these, these pests, right? One of the first things we had to get used to was every time you open your door and you walk outside, you'll hear all this, this rustling and you'll see these lizards jump out in front of you. And I'm not afraid of lizards. They don't bother me. They don't hurt us. They don't bite. They're awesome. They actually take care of other bugs which is great. They eat spiders and small insects and mosquitoes. That's fantastic. I'm a big fan of that. But you don't want them in your house. And they will from time to time. You know, you leave that door open, you're talking to the neighbor who knocked on the door or kids run out. They leave the door open. Next thing you know, you have a gecko run in the house or you have one of these small lizards run in the house and then you got to try to track them down. This is just part of life of living here in Florida. You could have a snake come in. It's not common. We've been here for five years. I've never had a snake come in my house. As a matter of fact, I've only seen a snake one time in our yard. Um, so that's never been an issue for us. We've never seen an alligator in our yard or our community. Are they here? Absolutely. Um, you know, tragically, and I'm sharing the truth, y'all. So forgive me. I know some people don't want to hear this and you're like, you know, you're doing a terrible job at selling Tampa. Like, I, trust me, I know that there's some things you have to deal with. But literally a week ago, there was a lady who lost her life because she kept breaking into an area where she had already been taken out of. Um, and there was a 14 foot alligator in there. That, and uh, that's terrible, right? It's terrible. And you heard that story of Disney a few years ago where, um, you know, the family was visiting Disney and something happened, right? So I'm not gonna repeat what that was, but like, just keep this in mind, right? I, I share this with everyone. When it comes to fresh bodies of water in the state of Florida, 
if you can't see the as if you can't see the bottom, don't ever entertain putting a limb in there. That just doesn't make any sense. Um, even if you can see the bottom and it's a fresh body of water, assume that there's an alligator there. Even if there isn't, assume that there is. You will be able to go about your life. You will be safe. You will have less concern about what's going on. Don't walk your kids and your dogs right around the edge of a retention pond or areas. I mean, we have them all marked off all over the place. It says, be careful, gators in the water, right? And the county will come and remove them once they get to a certain size, but y'all, they were here long before we were. You need to be mindful of that. So if that's something that you cannot wrap your mind around, I would encourage you to reconsider making a move to Tampa. You know, when it comes to the Gulf Coast, you know, we've got stingrays out there. We teach the kids what's called the stingray shuffle um, so they don't get uh, stung. But our kids have never been stung. They're beautiful creatures. We love to go out there when we're out there. But we do have sharks too. They have sharks in Florida. Now, shark attack in Tampa, I have not heard of one. Um, you're more likely to be struck by lightning twice than you are ever to be um, attacked by a shark. But they're out there, y'all. They they live in the ocean. We're visiting it. <laughs> so that's something to keep in mind. The no we've talked about these at length. They're so small that you can actually hardly see them, hence the, the name no I actually think the no are much worse than the mosquitoes. It really depends on where you live with the mosquitoes. We live closer to the beach. We don't have a problem with mosquitoes. As a matter of fact, they're better here than they were for us back in Michigan. But there are areas, you know, we have friends right down the road. They live in a, a lower lying area, have wetlands all around them, and the mosquitoes are terrible. So that is definitely something you need to keep in mind when you're considering making a move to Florida. Do not lose sight of that. And hey, I hope you got value out of today's video. I'm going to leave two videos right here that I think you are going to get a tremendous amount of value on. So make sure you watch those next. And if you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out to me and my team. Be more than happy to answer those. All of our contact information is listed down below. And until next time, go out and live that Tampa life.